Which PC component should you prioritize for your gaming PC? Is it the GPU? Is it the CPU? Or are there actually more components that you should be looking at? Well, in this video, I will answer all of those questions and I will also give you an example of two PC builds, one where you prioritize the components that I recommend you and one where you don't prioritize the most important component. So stay until the end if you want to learn more about computers and if you're thinking of buying a new gaming PC yourself, I will also give you a really good solution if you don't want to go through the process of learning everything about PC components because that can be time consuming. And that being said, let's start. The most important component when it comes to building a new system is the GPU if you want the best gaming performance. Most titles are more GPU demanding and prioritizing your CPU for gaming doesn't make sense. However, you have to make sure that your CPU will not bottleneck your GPU and if you do not know how to do that, you can do two things. The first one is by going to the bottleneck calculator, I will leave the link in the description and search for the CPU and GPU combo that you're thinking about, the resolution and then make sure that you change the purpose to graphics card intense tasks which means gaming once you do that it will give you a percentage and anything below 10 percent is not considered a major bottleneck and you're good to go and the other option is looking for benchmarks of your CPU and GPU combo, for example, Ryzen 5 7600X with the RTX 4070. Then you want to look at the percentage of CPU and GPU utilization. And if you see that the GPU is almost always utilizing 90% or higher, then there's no bottleneck. And of course, there are some titles, especially the easier to run games on low settings that are not going to be utilizing 90% of your GPU. And that's completely fine because those type of games will not require high usage of your GPU. But if most titles are using 90% and above, then that's fine. Also make sure that you put the resolution right on the benchmarks on YouTube because you do not want to buy for example a Ryzen 5 7600X with the RTX 4070 for 1440p resolution and you are looking at benchmarks at 1080p because if the resolution is different then the results of the bottleneck are also going to be different. Another point to make here is that not only your CPU can bottleneck your GPU but also other components can bottleneck the entire gaming experience and I will talk about that in a second. Before doing that, I want to show you two examples of a thousand dollar PC build, one where I prioritize the GPU and the other one where I prioritize everything in the system. First, let's talk about the one where I prioritize everything. For a thousand and twenty bucks, you're getting the Ryzen 5 7600 X, great CPU with the Thermal Right Assassin X for the CPU cooler, which is going to be plenty of cooling, an MSI Pro, Basic 50 m Wi-Fi Micro ATX motherboard, and then we have 32 gigs of the DR5 memory memory at 6000 MHz CL30, really fast timings, a 1 terabyte Gen 4 SSD, the RX 6700 XT for the GPU, a Montec Air 903 Max ATX mid tower case which has 4 pin cell fans, plenty of airflow, and last but not least we have a 750 watt 80 plus gold power supply that's AT rated. If you put this PC build together you are going to be getting amazing 1440p gaming experience and there's nothing wrong with the level of performance that you're getting here, in fact it's actually quite good. On a 15 game average from TechSpot, the RX 6700 XT at 1440p was able to average 74 FPS and we are talking about high demanding titles on high to ultra settings, so if you want to play easier to run titles, you're going to be getting much higher FPS. But now let's imagine I prioritize the GPU instead and get a system that will not bottleneck gaming performance. For 1032 bucks, so just $12 more expensive, you can get the Ryzen 7 5700X, which in terms of performance is slightly slower than the Ryzen 5 7600X. Then we get the same CPU cooler, a B550M Pro 4 motherboard that has plenty of features for gaming. Then we have 32 gigs of DDR4 memory, a 1 terabyte Gen 3 SSD, which is really good for gaming, and you definitely don't need Gen 4 SSD. Then for the case, we have the Fantex Eclipse G300A with 3 print style fans, a beautiful front mesh panel. I love this case for the price of $55. And then I also added one extra Fantex fan, RGB by the way, for you to put in the back. And then last but not least, we have a 650 watt 80 plus bronze power supply that's going to be enough for this type of build. As I said before, the total price is $1,032. And the reason why it's more expensive is because the GPU. I went with the RX 7800XT instead. So for around the same price, you are getting the 7800XT, which is about 48% faster 
better in rasterized performance than the RX 6700 XT. You also get more VRAM, which is helpful if you want a more future-proof GPU. And on top of that, you get AV1 encoding, which is going to be really solid if you want to do streaming on YouTube for your streaming quality. If you put this together in the bottleneck calculator I mentioned, 1440p graphics card intense tasks, the Ryzen 7 5700X and RX 7800 XT, 0% of bottleneck. So there's no bottleneck here, your GPU will be running as it should. And on that 15M average I've mentioned before, the RX 6700 XT was able to average 74 FPS, while the 7800 XT 108. That's a 34 FPS difference on average at 1440p on high to ultra settings. And then if you want to take 1080p as an example, because you want to play at 1080p, the 6700 XT was able to average 103 FPS, while the 7800 XT 147 FPS. A 44 FPS difference on average. And then you can take 4K as an example in case you want to operate to 4K down the line, where the 7800 XT is able to average over 60 FPS and the 6700 XT about 40 FPS. This is going to make a huge difference when it comes to your gameplay. If you want a more smooth experience, the 7800 XT is clearly faster and you can get it for the same price if you just prioritize your GPU. And sure, if you have more money to spend, you can get a better platform, a better CPU, and have a better all-around system for the 7800 XT. But if you have about $1,000 and you want the best price-to-performance system, please prioritize your GPU. And as I said before, there are other components that can create bottlenecks. For example, the motherboard, if it doesn't have good VRMs, you can thermal throttle your CPU, which is not ideal. Then the case can also be a bottleneck if it doesn't have enough airflow or the power supply if it doesn't meet the requirements and it will potentially damage your system overall. Don't worry, you don't have to know about every component if you want to build a system because I have a video on the best PC builds for every budget and every resolution. Those PCs have no bottlenecks and you are going to ensure that you're getting the best gaming experience for the price depending on your budget and needs. And if you want a more personal PC recommendation, maybe for a pre-built PC or a PC build or just PCs in general, you can ask me on the personal PC help link. That one will be in the description as well. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you for your support and I will see you on the next one.